गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स एंड फ्रेंड्स वी आर डिस्कसिंग चैप्टर नंबर थ्री ह्यूमन रिप्रोडक्शन एंड वी हैव डिस्कस्ड मैनी टॉपिक्स इन दिस ह्यूमन रिप्रोडक्शन टूडे वी हैव टू लर्न फर्टिलाइजेशन एंड इम्प्लांटेशन हाउ द फर्टिलाइजेशन प्रोसेस टेक्स प्लेस एंड हाउ द इम्प्लांटेशन प्रोसेस टेक्स प्लेस ओके फॉर अंडरस्टैंडिंग द फर्टिलाइजेशन एंड इम्प्लांटेशन यू शुड हैव अ बेसिक नॉलेज ऑफ female reproductive system so i have just drawn a diagram of a female reproductive system okay we have already learned the female reproductive system and its part but i am just revising so that you can come to know or you can better understand the fertilization process you know that the female reproductive system the main primary part of female reproductive system it consists of two ovaries okay these ovaries they are present on the lower part of abdomen okay it's present in a lower part of abdomen okay and that is attached to the wall of a uterus next that is present near to a funnel shaped structure of oviduct this are the oviduct the funnel shaped structure of oviduct this is called as infundibulum that contains a finger like projections this finger like projection is called as fimbri okay there are two portion the wider portion of this oviduct or fallopian tube it's called as ampulla and the narrower portion is called as isthmus okay next this isthmus that's connected with the uterus this is cervix and that opens to vagina so these are the different parts of a female reproductive system now we have to understand how the process of fertilization takes place how fertilization process takes place that what we have to understand so see here how the fertilization process takes place see here during the copulation process copulation okay or you can also call it as coitus or you can also call it as intercourse these are the synonyms or in simple term you can say that a sexual activity okay during this process either copulation you can also call it as coitus or intercourse or in simple term say sexual activity the sperms are released into a vagina this is a vagina where the sperms are going to release a millions of sperm you know that in one ejaculation the 200 to 300 million sperms are released but here we have a limited space available so i am just showing it with the example of just one or two okay so but many millions of sperms are going to be released into our vagina that is a female reproductive part the process of release or deposition of that sperm into a vagina or the female genital tract this process is called as insemination what it is called as insemination okay so what is insemination insemination there is a release of the discharge of a sperm or semen into a na vagina or a female genital tract this is called as a insemination process now what happens once this sperm are going to be released this sperms are motile in nature means they are capable of movement and they move towards cervix so they enter into the cervix they go ahead from that it goes or enters into a uterus okay they are motile so they can swim they swim in the genital tract of a female okay and then finally they reaches sperm they reaches there are lots of sperm they reaches in the ampullary region this is the ampullary region okay where the reaches okay by swimming they reach to a ampullary region of oviduct or ovarian funnel okay this is the wider portion of this ampulla okay this happens this is the activity which happens during the intercourse to reach over here to reach once it is released into our vagina to reach over a ampullary region it may takes 
A different time interval depends on the motility of a sperm, and the time may range is from three to six hours to reach to an ampullary region. Okay, how much time it takes to reach over ampullary region? Three to six hours it will take to reach to an ampullary region. Okay, during the mean time, mean time, what happens? The ovary it releases the ovum, or you can say secondary oocyte. This is going to be released. A secondary oocyte. Okay, this secondary oocyte is also moves towards the ampullary region. This is towards the ampullary region. It starts a movement. Okay, now both reaches into an ampullary region where the sperm fuses with this ovum. Some sperm fuses with an ovum. This is the secondary oocyte which is gets released. Secondary oocyte. Okay, it's going to be released, or you can say a female gamete or ovum that gets released. But more specifically, I will call it as secondary oocyte. They get released, and it also moves towards the ampullary region because this oviduct also possesses the cilia, hair-like structures through which the ovum can move. Okay, because the ovum as such doesn't have motility. Sperm has a motility because it's a male gamete. You know that you know that. Male gametes are motile in nature, so it can move. But the ovum cannot move as such. For movement of ovum, the cilia which is present in the oviduct or fallopian tube it helps in some movement. And ultimately, both reaches into a ampullary region of oviduct. This is the ampullary region of oviduct. Now, where the fusion of them takes place and the fusion of that sperm with a secondary oocyte or ovum. This process is called as fertilization. This process is called as fertilization, and thus the fertilization takes place. To fertilization occur in this region of female reproductive system, both the gamete, that is the sperm and the ovum, they should be brought together. Okay, and if they are brought together, then and then the fertilization or fusion takes place. Okay, every time when insemination or copulation occurs, that doesn't leads to a fertilization. Every copulation doesn't leads to a fertilization, and so hence every time the pregnancy does not occur because the reason the for a fertilization to occur, the fusion is necessary. But you know that there is release of ovum or secondary oocyte only once in a month. And that is around a 14th day of menstrual cycle. So when this secondary oocyte gets released, at that time the chances of fertilization is very high. So that's why on the 14th day of menstruation, where ovulation takes place, at that time the chances of fertilization is very high. Okay. So remember, every copulation or coitus. Does not results into a fertilization and pregnancy. Okay, the fertilization only happens when the sperm meets with the ovum, and you know that ovum release. That's a ovulation process that occurs on the fourteenth day of menstrual cycle. Okay, so this process is called as fertilization. This process is called as fertilization. Clear, students? Okay, so this is called as fertilization. I again repeat. How the process is going to occur? Okay, during the copulation or coitus, the sperm are discharged into a vagina. This sperm has a motility, so it can easily swim. It swims through a cervix, uterus, and then it reaches to a ampullary region, the wider portion of a fallopian tube. Okay, now the secondary oocyte or the ovum that is also released from Ovary on the fourteenth day of menstrual cycle that also travel towards the ampullary region of oviduct. Okay, the release of secondary oocyte that occurs on the fourteenth day, where in the ampullary region both fuse together or the sperm they fuse with ovum or secondary oocyte that leads to a formation of a zygote. Okay, that leads to a formation of a zygote. This process is called as fertilization every copulation doesn't results into a fertilization and hence pregnancy 
For a fertilization to occur, the meeting of ovum and sperm is necessary. So the highest chances of fertilization occurs during or nearer to a 14th day of menstrual cycle. Okay. Now what happens? Once the fertilization process takes place, there is a formation of a zygote. Okay? Zygote. Now this zygote or the nucleus of that sperm and the nucleus of a secondary oocyte, they fuse together. They fuse together. And so that's why you know that the nucleus of a zygote uh, that contains 2n number of chromosomes. How it becomes a 2n? Because secondary oocyte or you can say ovum and I more specifically secondary oocyte that contains n number of chromosome the sperm it contains n number of chromosome both fuse together in a process called as fertilization so the resultant zygote which is going to produce that has a 2n number of chromosome so in short, if you talk about the human being, the secondary oocyte contains n number of chromosomes means 23 number of chromosome. Sperm contains another n number of chromosome means 23 number of chromosome. And both fuse together form 2n means 2 into 23 means 46 number of chromosomes are present. That means zygote contains 46 number of chromosome and secondary oocyte and the sperm that each contains 23 number of chromosome. Okay. So that is about a formation of a zygote by a process called as a fertilization. But now this is a secondary oocyte. What happens to it? This secondary oocyte, when the sperm enters into a secondary oocyte and gets a formation of zygote, it finishes its second meiotic division. Second meiotic division gets finished. And as a result of second meiotic division, it forms ovum or you can say a proper egg cell and you can also call it as the second that is going to be produced a small cell which is going to be produced that is called as second polar body what it is formed? second polar body okay first meiotic division has been completed and it leads to a formation of secondary oocyte we have learned it during the oogenesis process okay recall the oogenesis process and in oogenesis process recall the maturation phase in a maturation phase, the meiotic division takes place in a primary oocyte and first meiotic division finishes and then two possibilities. At the end of first meiotic division, secondary oocyte is produced. Now after completion of first meiotic division, there are two possibilities. Either fertilization takes place or fertilization does not take place. Recall, if fertilization does not take place, means fusion does not take place, whatever the content are there, they are liberated or discharged along with a menstrual fluid. But if a fertilization process takes place, then there is a fusion takes place and the second meiotic division completes. Okay, here without fertilization, second meiotic division process does not occur. Okay, but if fertilization takes place, the second meiotic division finishes and it produces the two cells, one ovum and the second one is second polar body. Okay, and thus a zygote is going to be formed. Okay, because with this ovum, this secondary oocyte or sperm, sorry, sperm, it gets a fused. Okay, and thus ultimately a zygote is going to be formed. This process is called as fertilization. This process is called as fertilization. Clear, students? Now, at that time, during the fertilization, during the meeting of sperm with a ovum, the sex of a fetus or a sex of a baby is already determined. Depends which type of chromosome have fused with it or which kind of a sperm has fused with it. You know that a female has XX chromosome. So every gamete which is produced, they have only one type of a chromosome that is called as X. So whatever the secondary oocyte or the ovum that has only X type of chromosome as a 23rd number of chromosome. In a male, the chromosome is XY. So half of the sperm, this is a sperm, they carry is an X chromosome, another half they carry is a Y chromosome. So it happens that few one, few 
sperm that contains X chromosome and few contains a Y chromosome. Okay, which sperm that fuses with it? Suppose if it is an X containing X chromosome containing sperm fuses with a ovum because the ovum always contains X. Then it leads to a formation of X and X by fusion. X and X. Okay, and ultimately a female baby is produced or girl baby is produced. But if this is a sperm which contains a Y chromosome, then X and Y, that XY containing baby is produced, that means a male is produced. Okay, so depends which sperm fertilizes the ovum, whether X chromosome containing sperm or Y chromosome containing sperm fertilizes the ovum, depends on that the sex of a baby or a fetus has been determined and it has already been determined during a fertilization process means a fusion process or you can also call it as during a scene gathering okay that is determined if x containing sperm then it is a female is produced if y containing then it is a male is produced because always the ovum contains a x chromosome this denotes that the sex of a fetus is determined by a male not a female but in our society for a female girl or for delivery of a female girl a lady has been blamed but actually it has been determined by a male okay which sperm whether it's an x containing sperm or y containing sperm they mix with a ovum okay 50 50 percentage of the sperm are there okay 50 percent sperm are x containing and 50 percent sperm are Y chromosome containing okay so there is 50% chances that a male is produced and 50% chances are that female is produced okay so ultimate point is that while during a fertilization or fusion the sex of a fetus has been determined and it depends on the sperm that contain either X chromosome or Y chromosome that determine the sex of a baby so this is all about a process called as fertilization what it is called as fertilization clear students where fusion takes place in which region the fusion takes place ampullary region the fusion takes place now what happen, happens after a fertilization so after fertilization the next process takes place is called as implantation what it is called as implantation so what how the implantation takes place I am just deleting whatever the part that is not needed and keeping the part which is needed. Okay. Now the next process after fertilization the process takes place is called as implantation. What is the implantation process? You know that where the fertilization process takes place? The fertilization process takes place in an ampullary region where two M zygote is formed. This zygote is formed or as a result of fertilization between a sperm and ovum that is formed into an ampullary region. Now this zygote that will travel through an isthmus and it enters into an uterus it enters into a uterus or they enter into a uterine cavity they enter into a uterine cavity while it is transferring from ampullary to an isthmus these cells are dividing it is dividing 
Okay, they all are two and contain. How it divides? Initially, it's just a one cell, two and what we call it as zygote, and then it forms or divide by mitosis, and it forms two cells, one and two. Again, divides and it forms four cells. Then again divides and it forms eight cells. These are the eight cells. This is a schematic diagram for easy understanding. It is mitosis division. So divide by a mitosis. So one zygote that converts to a two cell, two to four, four to eight, eight to a sixteen cells. Okay, so these are the two cells. Four cells, eight cells. Okay, this process occurs where? This process occurs where when the zygote is traveling and reaches to an uterus. That zygote continuously dividing by a mitosis process and it forms two, four, eight, and sixteen cell. The group of a cell which contains eight to sixteen cell. Remember, a group of a cell. Which contains eight to sixteen cell. This is called as morula. What it is called as morula. This is very important regarding to examination point of view. A group of cells which contains eight to sixteen cells. This is called as morula. I specify these cells which are going to be formed. These cells are called as blastomere. What are the name of these cells? They are called as blastomeres. Okay, so while transferring from ampulla to an uterus, the zygote divides and it converts to a blastomere. That converts into a blastomere. And group of eight to sixteen blastomere. Group of eight to sixteen blastomere. What we call it as morula. What we call it as morula. Clear? Now this morula again continue to. divide and that converts into a blastocyst that converts into a blastocyst clear this blastocyst suppose i draw this is a blastocyst that contain a cells okay that contain the cells Okay, so this blastocyst that contains the cell, what we call it as blastomere, a group of cells. What we call it? Uh, this is the name of cell. What we call it as blastomere, and that is surrounded to a blastocyst. The morula now converts to a blastocyst. Okay, in a blastocyst, the cells of blastomere they are organized into two layers. How many layers? Two layers. Outer region. Okay, this is called as trophoblast, and the inner cells, inner one, that is called as inner cell mass. It's called as inner cell mass. Clear? Okay, continue. I can repeat. After fertilization, what happens in a ampullary region? There is a formation of a zygote. Zygote continue to divide by a mitosis process while it is transferring. Through this fallopian tube, okay. So the one cell becomes a two cell, two cell becomes a four cells, four cell becomes a eight cells, eight cell becomes a sixteen cells. These cells, which are going to be formed, they are called as what is the name of these cells? They are called as blastomere. Such ultimately eight to sixteen cells are produced. To produce the sixteen cells from a one cell zygote, it will take approximately one week. It will take a one week to produce a. 16 cells blastomere from a single zygote now 8 to 16 cell blastomeres are called as what is the name of this 8 to 16 cell blastomere that's called as morula this morula also continue to divide and that converts to a blastocyst so blastocyst contains a lots of cells what we call it as blastomere the cells of blastomeres now organize or arrange into two the outer layer of it is called as trophoblast and the inner one it's called as inner mass inner one is called as inner mass 
The cells of this trophoblast, more where it is formed, the cells of this trophoblast that attaches to a wall of uterus. So cells of trophoblast, that is the outer layer, outer layer, okay, that attaches with a uteri or uterus lining. That attaches with a uterus lining. And the inner one, the inner cell mass, from that, the embryo will develop. What is develop? Embryo will develop. So here the trophoblast that attaches with the lining of a uterus and that process attachment of a, this blastocyst to a lining of a uterus that process already we have learned that process is called as implantation that's called, that's called as implantation and thus the implantation takes place implantation that means attachment of a blastocyst to the wall of a uterus that is called as an implantation and how the implantation process takes place in an implantation process the outer cells which are arranged they are called as trophoblast that attaches to a wall of uterus and thus the implantation process takes place and the inner cells which are present the cells which are present inner inner to a trophoblast that develops into an embryo develops into an embryo and thus the implantation process takes place so we have finished two processes first is fertilization and the second one is called as an implantation okay now what is happening once the fertilization takes place means the fusion takes place if it will travel it divides while traveling it attaches to a wall of a uterus okay that is process called as implantation now its development starts it makes a contact how it makes a contact the contact occurs so how it makes the wall of uterus the lining of uterus it develops a finger like projection which projection finger like projection this is called as chorionic villi what is called as chorionic villi a finger like projection which are developed by it okay by the lining of a uterus okay that is called as chorionic, chorionic villi now the cells of this trophoblast it interdigitate like this interdigitate okay see here this is a trophoblast and this is a lining of a uterus they interdigitate with it okay once it interdigitate it makes attachment strong and this which is going to be formed this is called as placenta what it is formed it leads to a formation of placenta okay this placenta they will or it will supply oxygen and nutrient to a developing embryo okay it will supply a oxygen and nutrient to a developing embryo along with that it will remove a carbon dioxide and the waste from a developing embryo okay and thus there is a close contact between the fetus developing embryo and a maternal body or mother's body okay and that is established through a placenta but that contact doesn't establish as such the placenta is connected to a umbilical cord and this umbilical cord that makes a contact between or between maternal body mother's body and a fetus or developing embryo okay so this umbil placenta is connected to a umbilical cord that is just acting as a medium or a bridge for transport of oxygen and nutrient from mother body to one of fetus and transport of waste and carbon dioxide from fetus to one of mother's body okay and thus the fetus gets a nutrition and develop it okay and thus the placenta formation takes place and the formation of this placenta is called as placentation what it is called as placentation clear so thus the formation of placenta takes place the placenta once it is formed then releases the certain hormones remember the name of this hormone we will discuss i just give you a name here hcg hpl estrogens progestogens these are the hormones they are released by it placenta and they are responsible for a certain growth hcg human chorionic gonadotrophin hormone 
HPL, human placental lactogens, and you already know about the estrogen and the progesterone. Even one more hormone is also released, that is called as relaxin, that is also released from placenta, but that is released only during the pregnancy. These are the three hormones I just underlined. These are the three hormones, HCG, HPL and the relaxin, these are the three hormones which are only released during the pregnancy. Okay, what are their role, what are their functions that we will discuss in the next session. Okay, but that process is called as a process of formation of a placenta is called as placentation. What is called? Placentation. So clear students, we have discussed three processes today. Fertilization means a fusion. Next, implantation means attachment of that blastocyst or trophoblast to the wall of a uterus. That what we call as implantation. And next, placentation means a formation of placenta, how the placenta we will uh, develop. The detail regarding this placentation and further embryonic development we will do in the next session. Okay? Keep, till then, keep learning. Okay? In the previous sessions, we have discussed many important topics like male reproductive system, female reproductive system, spermatogenesis, oogenesis, menstrual cycle, what we have discussed in the previous session. So, they are very important examination point of view. They are asked in a four marks. So, prepare it thoroughly. Okay? So, keep learning, keep watching. Thank you for watching. And don't forget to like and subscribe this channel. Thank you once again.